The new covenant, we're looking at the proper perspective. And you can see I've got on there, self-centered or Christ-centered. That kind of strikes home to a lot of us. We look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, and I love this. It says, God has united you with Jesus. For our benefit, God made him to be wisdom. Christ made us right with God. It's important. He made us pure. He made us holy. And he freed us from sin. So self-centeredness is something we all have encountered. And we've dealt with it. Or maybe we're still, still dealing with it. We've all been preoccupied with oneself and one's own affairs, of course. In the psych world, one extreme form of self-centeredness is referred to as a disorder from the normal, and it's called preoccupied attachment disorder. It doesn't stop there. It also can manifest into an anxious preoccupied attachment disorder. Since, it's a highly attack anxiety, since it is high anxiety attachment style, people with this order are more sensitive to any sign of rejection and remain constantly watchful forever, feeling abandonment for others. It is as if one have determined that they are not lovable, thus acting all the while as though they are being rejected. Thoughts of, I would like to get to know about you, but I also know that in due course, I'll be rejected. I won't be loved. In fact, the closer I try to get, the higher my anxiety becomes. The majority of people, if not all, have experienced rejection. Of course, to what degree and how long one continues in rejection will determine if it becomes a disorder of the mind. So what are the effects of one feeling rejected? They're horrible. It's a feeling of worthlessness, a feeling of condemnation. I'm not fitting in. I can do nothing right. I know this disorder well as I lived it for the first 17 or more years of my life. And now I spent the next 50 years trying to get out of it. And there's not enough secular counseling in the world to cure this disorder. One's self cannot cure one's self. That little person they talk within you, the little, little guy or the little girl, I don't want no part of him because he's the one that got me into this thing. So only, only Jesus, the person of Christ, is able and is willing to take care of the rejected souls and heal them. Can I hear an Amen. It's the unconditional love that offers healing for the rejected soul. And it wasn't until I began to understand that my Lord Jesus and what He's done for me did I start to mend. And again, it wasn't when I placed my faith in Christ that rejection went totally away. It was my continued desire to know Jesus and is still in process to this day that brought me about into the healing process. My past behavior, learned behavior, I turned and placed that upon God. If my family, part of my family rejected me, surely he's going to reject me too. But I want to be with him, and I'm fearful to do anything wrong. So now I've got a dilemma going on. The one I want to get close to is the one I'm afraid is going to reject me. And again, it wasn't when I placed my faith in Christ that rejection went away. So you may say, well, what specifically was it, Pastor? I discovered my greatest need was filled in Christ. That's what I found out. I simply needed to identify in Him and not in myself. I needed to be Christ-centered and not self-centered. My Lord began to show me this internal struggle I have in a result of my experience with human relationships, not my relationship with Him. I finally understand the concept of we see our Heavenly Father like our earthly Father and that many of our past relationships where we felt rejected or condemned have hindered our walk with the Lord who has forgiven us forever, has set us free from condemnation, set us free, free from shame, and set us free from guilt. My Lord affirms to me and affirms to you in Romans, there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to Him, the power of the life-giving Holy Spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. Hallelujah. For by that one offering, He forever made perfect those who are being made holy. And the Holy Spirit testifies to this also, for He says, This is the new commandment I will make with my people on that day, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts, and I'll write them on their minds. And then He says, I will never remember their sins again, or their lawless deeds. And when sins have been forgiven, there's no need to offer any more sacrifices. And since we have a great high priest who rules over God's house, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting Him. 
For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with the blood of Christ and have made us clean, and our bodies have been washed with pure water. For God's will, this is beautiful, for God's desire, His will, was for you and me to be made holy by the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. And if God wills it, it will be done. So when I began to identify in Christ, I began to understand I am holy, blameless, shameless, and forgiven, and loved unconditionally, eternally due to the finished work of Christ and the covenant of redemption. This took place from the moment I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. However, it takes time to get to know the beauty of our salvation, the finished work of our Lord. It will continue for all eternity to know God deeper and deeper and deeper. He is that vast. I'm being set free and unleashed at the same time. It's so overwhelming and so wonderful and so freeing in my life. It makes the worries and cares of the worlds be satisfied with the sovereignty of my Lord. He's sovereign. He knows exactly what's going to go on. And he has an exact plan for what's going on. And we want to stay with him and join with him in what that is. Don't get me wrong, I'm still learning. And I'm sure there are still strongholds that need to be broken. But I see more of the light on and on. However, self-centeredness can play a role in hindering our walk with Christ. You may say, what do you mean, Pastor? Allow me to explain this, beginning with our being saved. At the point of our accepting Christ as our Savior, we have a thorough changing in our nature. Our old nature is cut away. We go from being totally self-centered to now being Christ-centered. So Christ's love, Christ's love controls us. Isn't that beautiful? Since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we died to our old life. He died for everyone so that those who receive this new life will no longer live for themselves. That self-centered gone. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new creature. New, ha, new creature, not a new preacher. A new creature. The old life is gone. Misprinted that on mine. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. And he says, let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth that you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. Pray you're overflowing with thankfulness. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that comes from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. Pretty good instructions. For Christ lives in all the fullness of God in a human body. So you're also complete through your union with Christ who is head over every ruler and every authority. And when you came, when you came to Christ, you were circumcised, but not by a physical procedure, Christ performed a spiritual circumcision in the cutting away of your old sinful nature. How did this happen? For you were buried with Christ. Remember the baptism? You were buried with Christ when you were baptized, and with Him you were raised to new life, and you entrusted the mighty power of God who raised Him from the dead. You were dead because of your sins, and because of your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ, for He forgave all your sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. And you died to this life. And now your real life is hidden with Christ in God. Now I want to tell you, if you're going to play hide and seek, you hide in the Lord. You're, that's the best place to hide, being hidden with Him. You may say, so Pastor, how does this self-centeredness play a role in hindering our walk with Christ? You just said it was cut away. I did say that. In fact, the scripture we just read tell us so. While we're born again, we still have our old behavior in our mind, our soul. We've got a brand new spirit, and our soul reflects our brand new spirit. We still have the old behavior there too. That's why we can be deemed sinless because of our brand new spirit that he's given us, holy without blame. But our soul still houses some of the behavior. And what's going on with the behavior? We're using the word of God to wash that behavior and become more like Christ. God has a spirit, of course. We know He's spirit. He had a soul. His soul is the reflection of His spirit that we can see the beauty of who He is. Your soul can now reflect the beauty of the spirit of God. But we got this, bless you, honey. We still got this little behavior deal that's there. And the Lord is working on that. So while we're born again, we still have our old behavior in our mind. This is what the Holy Spirit now works on with us through the renewing of our mind. 
Your spirit is new, but your soul is where thinking and actions progressively become more consistent with who you already are. This is absolutely key. It's not that you need to become something you're not. It's that your soul, when not deceived by outside influencers, can reflect more and more who you already are, now being in Christ Jesus. While our old nature, I'm sorry, while our new nature is new, our minds are in the process of being renewed. We're all instructed to, look at this, Romans 12 too. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind and by the testing that you may discern what is the will of God and what is good and what is acceptable and perfect. In Romans 12, 12 too, encourages us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. This involves what? Aligning our thoughts and our attitudes with the truth of our identity in Christ, which in turn influences our behavior. When you settle in on Christ-centeredness and you identify in Christ, here's your identity. I am whole, I'm blameless, and I'm totally forgiven. I am valued by the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm accepted by the Father, and I'm empowered by the Holy Spirit. I need nothing out here to supply my need because it's all supplied by God. But if I attach to anything else, that will start to be my value and my worth. And before you know it, if it's a person, place, or thing, the Lord loves you enough, He won't let that satisfy. And he'll, he'll, He's jealous and He'll direct you back to Him. He wants you to identify in the beautiful covenant of redemption He's provided for you. Look at Colossians 3, 9, and 10. You've stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds. Put on your new nature and be renewed. This is in the mind, in your soul. Let the Spirit, let this brand new Spirit that the Holy Spirit has transformed you into you, has, has taken care of, and let that soul you've got now reflect that Spirit in your heart. Let that be reflected. Because we've cut away your old sinful nature, all your wicked deeds. Your, your, your behavior is still there. Put on your new nature and be renewed in your mind as you learn to know your Creator and become like Him. And there's a key right there as you become to know your Creator. Knowing Him more and more and more and loving and loving and loving and what He's done for you and how He cares for you, how He's accepted you, how He'll never reject you and there's no condemnation. Took His Son, placed Him on the cross for you because He loves you. And He holds you and no one can take Him out of your hand. Now that's what you want to identify in. Our behavior flows from this new self as we grow in understanding and live out the reality of who we are in Christ Jesus. Our behavior is a natural outflow of our new nature in Christ. And as we embrace our identity, we rely upon the Holy Spirit and renew our minds. Our actions will increasingly reflect the character and the love of Jesus. See, this transformation is not about striving to become something we're not. It's about living out who we already are in Him. We need to rest. We need to learn to do nothing and rely upon Him. I don't mean be lazy and don't do anything as far as the, what Christ would have you do. Quit trying to do, <laughs> quit trying to do anything trying to make you more worthy. Quit trying to do anything to make you more loved. Just stop it. You can't be loved any more than you are. This transformation is not about striving to become something we're not, but about living out who we already are in Him. With our brand new nature, we are learning to imitate Christ on earth. We're renewing our mind through the washing of the Scripture, rooting out the old self-centered behavior. You've already got a brand new spirit. Now we're getting the behavior taken care of. See, self-centered behavior causes us to have anxiety and be fearful of God. We ourselves begin to work at keeping and maintaining our relationship intact with Him. This is stinking thinking, having us make frantic attempts to get right and stay right with God. That was, that was and now is Jesus' job. He alone makes you right with God and keeps you right with God. He's interceding for you right now in the heavenly throne room, interceding on your behalf before God, saying that we are holy and sinless. Look at 1 Corinthians. God has united you with Christ Jesus... Who has made us right with God? Christ has made us right with God. He made us pure, holy, and He freed us from our sin. 
You can even boast about the work of Jesus. You want to boast about something? Look at verse 31. Therefore, as the scriptures say, if you want to boast, boast only about the Lord. That's something good to boast about. What can we boast about? Do you know the redemption that the Lord provided for me from the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Good grief, I had nothing to do with it. I just got to accept the free gift. Jesus makes us right with God. How? Atoning for our sins, justifying us through faith, reconcil reconciling us to God, and giving us a brand new life. His finished work on the cross and His resurrection are the foundation of our relationship with God, ensuring that we are fully accepted and loved by Him. It's all His work, and it is finished. There's no additions, no amendments, no corrections. It is perfect, and He did so to make you right with Him. Right now, forever, right with God. God has united me with Christ Jesus. God has made you right with God. And when Jesus does something, it's done perfectly. He didn't make any mistakes with you. He did it perfectly. There's a beauty in discovering you no longer need to make frantic attempts to get right and stay right with the Lord. And through understanding this truth, we can abandon all the worries that once consumed us. What are some of the worries, Pastor? Am I confessing enough? Am I praying enough? Am I reading enough? Am I serving enough? Am I being enough? In other words, am I even good enough? That's been answered by the finished work of Jesus Christ. How good do you think being holy without blame and how good do you think being without sin is? I'd say that's pretty top-notch, wouldn't you? That's as close as you can get. That's perfection by the Lord. And when we rest, rest in the finished work of Christ, we start to ease into a healthier outlook of life. If you do, I promise life will become simpler, less worrisome. It will. Who's going to take care of that new ailment that you have? The Lord will. Who's going to help me with them? The Lord will. You've got someone that will help you through anything. And you'll get to see the beauty of His peace that surpasses all understanding come over you and some of the difficult things that you'll get through. And you'll see the beauty of Him there. If you do, I promise you'll become closer. You'll become simpler, less worrisome. How so, God? Because we realize it's no longer about you and me and what we've done. It's about Jesus and what He's done. That's our focus. Well, how do you rest on how, or, or how do we allow this to happen, Pastor? Resulting and resting in the finished work of Christ is all, involves trusting and relying on what Jesus has accomplished for us through His death and resurrection. Here's how we can experience this rest. Number one, and we're getting there, understand complete forgiveness. I want you to recognize that through Jesus' sacrifice, all your sins, your past, present, and future are forgiven. Hebrews 10, 14 tells us that by one offering, He's perfected for us all time. This means there is no need to strive for additional forgiveness or cleansing. It's already complete. Another thing you can experience His rest, embrace, his new embrace your new identity. Grab a hold of that. Accept that you're a brand new creation in Christ. Your old self has been crucified with Him, and now you live with a brand new heart and a brand new spirit. This, this new identity means you're fully accepted and loved by God and are free from condemnation. Another way to rest, please trust in His righteousness. Rest in the fact that you're justified and made righteous through faith in Christ and not by your own efforts. It's all been done for you. This righteousness is a gift and assures you of your right standing with God. And because you're trusting in His righteousness and because you have understood complete forgiveness and you're embracing your new identity, now you can live in union with Christ. Acknowledge that you're united with Christ and that His life is in you. This union, this unity with Christ means you can rely on His strength and guidance, allowing the Holy Spirit to produce fruit in your life. And above all, let go of legalism. Let go of the religious things you were taught that are keeping you in fear and making you think you're not standing in rightness with God. That's Jesus' job, and He did it well. Release any attempts to earn God's favor through religious works or adherence to a law. 
In Colossians 2, 16 and 17, it reminds us that the law was a shadow of the things to come, but the reality is found in Christ. So resting in Him means living in the freedom of His grace. Resting in the finished work of Christ is about trusting in His complete forgiveness, embracing your new identity, relying on His righteousness, living in union with Him, and letting go of legalistic efforts. It is a journey of faith where you are continually to remind yourself of the truth of the gospel and allow it to shape your life. Look what Jesus says in Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 and 30. Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. That was every one of us. Every one of us. Take my yoke. Saddle up with me. Let me show you how to do life. I'm the stronger one, says Jesus. When you put a young calf and an, an old bull in the yoke, who you think is going to lead that young calf? You think that young calf's going to lead that bull? No way. They're yoked together. That old bull is going to lead that calf, going to take him out of the ditches and show him how to do what he needs to get done. Yoke up with Jesus and let him show you what to do. Let, he says, look at this. Let me teach you because I am humble. There's your Jesus. And I'm gentle at heart. There he is. And you'll find rest for your souls. There's the formula. You want to have rest for your soul? Grab a hold of this. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. There's your formula in Scripture. Rest with Christ. Yoke up with Him. He's humble. He'll teach you to be humble. He'll teach you how to be gentle. And you'll find rest for your soul, for your weary soul. Let's pray. Father, your scripture is so clear. But Father, we have to really understand through faith what you've done for us in the finished works. And once we start to grasp that, we're able to walk in a freedom. And Father, your word says wherever the Holy Spirit is, there's a liberty. And it's a liberty to be free from all of those old things that keep us torn down, that keep us many times led into depression that we're trying to find something in someone else that will give us value and worth apart from you. It doesn't work. So, Father, let us look to you. Father, let us husbands look to you on how to love our wives. Father, let the wives look to you on how to love their husbands, and let's share a life together. Father, you're so precious in what you do for us. I so, I so desire, Father, that we see that beauty of who you are, and each one of us can step out with that smile on our face that we're walking with the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We love you, Father, for it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen and amen.